Five years ago, neurologist Dr. David Perlmutter launched a global phenomenon with the release of his best-selling book, Grain Brain. Since then, he's helped millions improve their health and fight against dementia and neurological diseases like Alzheimer's, all without drugs. Dr. Perlmutter says it's time to take control of your health. With his fully revised version of Grain Brain, he offers the latest nutritional and neurological updates so we can have a healthy, disease-free brain for life. Here with me now is Dr. David Perlmutter, and we thank you for joining us. I am delighted. This, we've, we've talked about your first book, Grain Brain, but this one is, has an update of what the progress in the last five years? It is. What, what's happened here is we have five years of validation that mm -hmm. the notion of eating a high-carb diet uh, is threatening to the brain and that we should really emphasize exercise, making sure our sleep is restorative, cutting our carbs, and eating, dare I say, more dietary fat. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Talk a little bit, if you will, about Alzheimer's meds, because you say in the book that they're actually a fraud. You know, it, it's, it's striking uh, that we have in America 5.4 million uh, Alzheimer's patients, many if not most of whom are taking the medications that doctors have prescribed in November of 2018 in the Journal of the American Medical Association was an article published by a researcher, Dr. Richard Kennedy, uh, where he analyzed the studies on these drugs and found that, in fact, not only do the common Alzheimer's drugs not work, but they speed the cognitive decline. It's like uh, giving a diabetic a, a pill that's going to raise their blood sugar. It makes no sense. And, you know, it, it, people put their faith in their doctors to do the right thing, and we really want to practice under the notion of, above all, do no harm. We've got to call it out. It's peer-reviewed science, and you know I'm grateful that we have this opportunity to share that information with people. So, have you seen a transition since that information came out in the journal? Have you seen a change in these things being prescribed for people, or are we so caught up in this is all we know how to do that it just keeps on? Unfortunately, it's the latter. And uh, my my feeling was that article, that research, which was wonderfully conducted. Uh, should have been on the evening news, should have been at the yes. beginning of the evening news and the front page of all of our major newspapers. And yet people still want to hold on to the notion that you can live your life however you choose and that there's a magic pill solution for all of your problems. Yeah. As it relates to Alzheimer's, that doesn't exist. I want to make one thing uh, very clear. If there were a treatment for Alzheimer's that worked, I would absolutely embrace it. Uh, not only would I have used it with my patients, but for my own father as well. Absolutely. I, I highly value the researchers who are trying to find a cure for this situation, but as yet we don't have an answer for that. And what's more compelling is we know that it is by and large preventable in the first place. Mm -hmm. So talk from that perspective, because I think people who are watching us are saying, well, what can I do? To... Well, part of the issue is inflammation. So what are the greatest stimulators of inflammation that can be avoided? It's a really excellent lead-in question, because uh, we've got to understand that this process of inflammation is not just the cornerstone of Alzheimer's, yeah. but Parkinson's coronary arteries, diabetes, and even some forms of cancer. So it's really in our best interest to reduce inflammation by reducing our consumption of sugar, making sure our diets are not threatening to our gut bacteria, mm -hmm. getting more aerobic exercising, eating more good dietary fat, and importantly, recognizing how important dietary fiber is to nurture the gut bacteria. These are actually not that challenging steps. It's just implementation that, that has to happen. Well, it's kind of what you said a moment ago. We can't go through life taking one pill to solve every problem, and we can't go through it just eating everything and anything that we want without having repercussions from that. Talk, if you will, for a moment about some of the warning signs of brain disease, because you also say that a lot of the um, cause of it starts 30 years before we're actually in it. So... What yes, so uh, there's been a push over the years to determine the earliest signs of Alzheimer's so that we can do mm -hmm. something. Well, what are you going to do? You don't have a treatment. Yeah. So uh, when you begin to have cognitive issues, you're forgetful, don't know where you put things, go to uh, a place, don't remember why, where are my keys? But your point is extremely important, and that is we sow the seeds for Alzheimer's in terms of our lifestyle choices in our 20s and in our 30s so that this important information about reducing inflammation 
happens to be the same information about weight loss, happens to be the Heart Smart diet, the diet that improves the immune system. It's all the same. It's not as if there's one life plan that's good for your heart but bad for your brain. Mm -hmm. It's all the same because they're all united in this one mechanism of inflammation. So you're killing three birds with one stone or more, <laughs> even. When I think you're nurturing. Nurturing. Uh, yeah, I, I want to <laughs> focus on life with candles, but you know the point is, it's these are lifestyle changes that can't wait mm -hmm. until we don't know where we put our keys. Well, let me ask you this: If someone has not applied all of these things in the early years of their life, and then they get to the place where some of the signs you're just mentioning happen, is it reversible? It is, and that's what's really quite remarkable. Uh, you've had, uh, at least on the 700 Club, uh, a very close friend of mine, Dr. Dale Bredesen, who's published a book about this. And he has a new book coming out really detailing the individual patients and how they've improved. Uh, I had the opportunity to write the foreword to that book, and I'm really, I feel very blessed by that opportunity. Because he's taken a different approach, that it isn't a magic bullet, but rather, it's a buckshot approach. I don't know if you know what yeah, buckshot I is. Do. There you go. <laughs> I do. Uh, and that is you have to leverage multiple uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Yes, diet. Yes, uh, um, lifestyle issues related to sleep, related to exercise, reducing exposure toxins, improving vitamin D status, to name just a few. Mm -hmm. But in so doing, he's been able actually, and uh, in published research, reverse this disease. Now, you know, to apply that to a large population is going to be compelling. My mission is to spread the word. John Kennedy said, the time to fix the roof is when the sun is shining. Yeah. And that's what we've got to uh, leverage in terms of preventing this very disease, the treatment for which is very, very challenging. Well, that's the message we wanted to get to you today. If you want to learn more and there's much more to learn, David's bestseller, Grain Brain, has been completely updated. You don't want to miss this. You can pick up a copy wherever books are sold. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Terry. You Good to see you again. You too. You bring a wealth of information.